Alright guys, so uh, today I'm continuing on the short block assembly. Uh, I got the new wrist pins in and I got them weighed out and, you know, situated to what piston they need to go with. Um, I only had to grind one of them again, but when the first set came, I only had to grind one of them then as well. So, uh, they're all pretty close to the same uh, weight and now they're dead on the same weight as the previous ones are, so the balance should be fine. Let me go ahead and show you why I had to get new wrist pins real quick. So you can see that there's some like rust on there. And I tried to remove it with steel wool, but not much of it came off and there's still kind of some residual pitting. Uh, and this was just because this is like a high carbon steel, so it rusts really easily, even though it's this kind of shiny mach machine finish. Uh, if you don't keep it oiled, it'll rust. So, um, you know, not bagging on the machine shop because I don't, they didn't do any grinding on these, so they probably didn't know that they were high carbon. So the machine shop did great work. The only ha problem I had was with the wrist pins. They, uh, they come in these little bags. So this is what they come like. So they come in these bags and there's like a light machine oil in the bag that keeps them from rusting. Uh, when they were finished doing all the weighing and stuff for the balance, they didn't save the bags. They just threw these back in the boxes and um whatever caused it to rust and pit i couldn't you know save them you can still feel them with your fingernails if you rub over the pits so that's just going to cause wear on the bearings in the rods so i was like they're ten dollars each for new wrist pins so i might as well buy new wrist pins and you know not chance it so we got the new wrist pins no big deal uh now i can continue on with the assembly so i got the pistons right here my head studs um, right now I'm just gonna start by uh, installing the rings onto the pistons and getting them in like the right orientation so that they're ready to go in the block So first things first, I'm going to go and install these C-clips into the inside of each piston so that it kind of, because you can't install them after the piston's in, so you have to install the inside ones first. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So JE Pistons gives you this um, little diagram right here that shows you where the um, end gaps of the rings are supposed to end up when you're assembling the pistons. Uh, this isn't too crucial, um, but you don't want them all to be in a row when you first start it up because they move when they when the engine's running. But just for initial startup, you want to make sure that none of the rings are gaps are you know in line with each other. Okay, so I went ahead and did a practice one just to figure out how it's done. But um, let's see if it'll focus. You can see the oil rings are in there and the two compression rings. And I matched the gaps up to what it says in the thing. So the top ring gap is on this side. The second ring gap is on this side. And then the bottom oil ring gap is right here. The top oil ring gap is right here. And then it doesn't really matter where the, the oil control ring gap is according to this picture. So I just put it over here somewhere. So now I'm going to move on and do the rest of the pistons.
right, so take a look at that. This is one of the last times you're going to see these nice shiny pistons. But I got the front arrow facing the front. This is the exhaust side, cylinder one. See, I already got the, the rod lined up. I just need to knock the piston down to where it's in line with the rod. And then I could put the wrist pin through. Finally, Whew. seven minutes to do that, seven minutes. Okay, so take a peek in there. You can see the wrist pin is now in the piston. Uh, so all I need to do now is install the C-clip and then this piston will be good to go. All right, so the uh, short block is pretty much assembled. All the pistons are in their spots, as you can see. Really nice and shiny. It's the last time you're gonna see these shiny pistons before the heads go on. Um, I left the plug holes out so I could show you the, uh, the clips and I just wanted to double check everything. But um, I have to show you on the back side. But let me rotate this around real quick. Okay, so if you look in this hole right here, you can see the clip is installed. You, it's very important to make sure that these clips are installed all the way. Otherwise they fall out and your wrist pin falls out and comes disconnected from your piston. And that's, you know, that's a very bad situation. All right, so just to kind of give you an idea of what it should be like after this point, uh, the engine should rotate really smoothly, so watch. And, you know, I'm not putting much force on this ratchet. Let me grab a smaller one just to give you a better idea. Okay, so here's a little quarter inch drive ratchet just to show you how much force I'm putting on it. So you can turn it with a quarter inch drive ratchet. That's kind of what you want to feel for. Yeah, and it's real nice and smooth. So the next thing I need to do is install this rear main seal. And uh, you're supposed to use seal drivers, but I didn't want to buy one, so I made this. Uh, it just kind of fits on the, the center, and then I can drive it in and it'll bottom out against this 
this edge right here, hopefully. Well, I'll probably have to tap it a little bit more past that, but we'll see. So I want to take you in for a close look, but um, you can see that the seal is flush with this metal outer ring. Um, it had to go past this ring. Yeah, I just kind of made it go in level and then just gently tapped it in with a piece of the wood. And that's how you install the rear main seal. So the next step is going to be to plug up these service holes and put this uh, oil separator cover on. So I got the uh, flywheel bolts laid out right here and uh, per the instructions that came with the ARP flywheel bolts um, I need to lubricate the threads with blue Loctite and then use their Loctite um, to lubricate the back side of the head. Okay so it also comes with you know the lubricant but I have some left over from the connecting rods so I'm just going to use this. 